RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Jack Douglas and Marvin Fisher, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, the orchestra under the direction of Skip Martin, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. First, a word from RCA Victor. Do you know that for just a few dollars, you can double the enjoyment you get from your radio or television set? Yes, for just a few dollars, you can enjoy the advantages of an expensive phonograph combination with an RCA Victor Automatic Victrola 45 attachment. This inexpensive record changer can be attached to play through any radio or television set. In fact, if your set has a phono jack, all you do is plug the attachment right in. It's as easy as that. And best of all, the Victrola 45 attachment costs as little as $16.75. Or, if you want to play all speeds, RCA Victor also has an automatic Victrola three-speed attachment. With its standard center spindle, it plays 33 and 78 RPM records. And for your 45s, you simply use a handy slip-on spindle. So see your RCA Victor dealer soon. Either one of these dependable RCA Victor record changers will give you hours of pleasure and enjoyment for many years to come. Ask for the Victrola 45 or three-speed attachment by RCA Victor, first in recorded music. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. At one time or another, most of us have misplaced an insurance policy, and that's just what has happened in the Harris household. So as we find Phil now, he and Elliot are hunting energetically through a lot of things that have accumulated in the attic. Curly, this is a lousy way to spend a beautiful, sunshiny day. If we weren't up in this dusty attic searching for that insurance policy, we could be doing something worthwhile. Like what? Well, several things. We could be out shooting lizards with my new pellet gun. <laughs> or we could be driving my motorcycle up and down the steps at the girls' entrance of Hollywood High School <laughs> With me standing up on handlebars <laughs> Or we could sneak in to see Rita Hayworth and Sadie Thompson We've seen it already eight times Yeah, but not real clear <laughs> Every time she does that dance, it steams up my 3D glasses. <laughs> Not mine. I got windshield wipers. <laughs> hey, there's that fishing reel I couldn't find. And look hey, here. Here's... What's this, Curly? Elliot, put that down and keep looking for the insurance policy. But what is it? That happens to be my uniform that I wore when I was in the Navy. Gosh, Curly, it's all ripped. Were you wounded? <laughs> well, I never told you about it before, Elliot. Because, well, I ain't the kind of a guy who likes to talk about himself. <laughs> Beginning when? All right, if you really want to know, you can look it up in the Navy records. I led an invasion. <laughs> and the battle was terrific. Gee, Curly, I didn't know. Was the battle successful? It certainly was. After seven grueling days, we took an island away from two sea lions and a goonie bird. <laughs> Curly, you've told that story so many times, you're beginning to believe well, it. Well, what am I going to tell my kids? That I spent my whole Navy career as a lookout? But, Curly, there's nothing to be ashamed of in that. You've got to go where the Navy sends you. Eh? Just what does a lookout do? Well, I don't know what the other ones did. But I sat in the crow's nest And whenever we crashed into another boat I'd yell, look out! <laughs> I 
<laughs> it was all a matter of timing. <laughs> I looked in the pockets of this uniform. The insurance policy ain't there. Oh, gee whiz. If I can't find it, it might be pretty serious. I hate to think of the consequence. There'd be nothing left but hunger and destitution. Nothing but stark, miserable poverty. How big a policy is this on your life, Curly? Oh, it's not on me. It's on Alice. <laughs> you realize what would happen to me if that sweet, dear little girl got a cold or something... And she couldn't make the trip to the bank every week and come home with that shopping bag full of loot? Yeah, it'd be pretty serious. You said that right. <laughs> How true. I might even have to go to work. <laughs> but of course, there's always the music business. What's that got to do with you? <laughs> Let's face it, Curly, with your musical talent, you couldn't be Bubble Boy with Lawrence Welk. I could burp better bubbles than the guy he's got. <laughs> Let me tell you something else, Leroy. I still sell a few of them Victor Platters. Don't ever worry about me. I'll be yeah, selling records. I'm getting worried about you, too. You've been up here in the attic for hours. Honey, I've been looking for that insurance policy that I took out on you with the uh, Philadelphia Mutual. Oh, didn't I tell you, Phil? I put that with our other policies in the bank. How much insurance have you got, Curly? He hasn't got any. And I'm not going to let him put it off another day. Phil, you're going to call Mr. McCauley the minute we get downstairs. Say, what are these, Phil? Letters tied with a blue ribbon. Alice, put those down. It's just some... Old correspondence of mine. Well, uh, these look like love letters, and and they are. They're from from somebody named who's Emma Jean Tussie. <laughs> oh, Alice, that that's ancient history. She was a girl I knew casually. She didn't mean much. We sort of fooled around together for a while. <laughs> But it was never anything more than just a platonic, friendly romance. Yeah. You'll find the whole thing in the Navy records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah very good. Right. Who is Emma Jean Tussie? Alice, I'm telling you, she meant nothing to me, just nothing. I don't doubt that. But I'm going to read one of these letters anyway. Alice. Listen to this. Dear Angel Hair... <laughs> I wanted you to have a picture for your wallet So I'm enclosing a snapshot Oh, oh, oh no Now, Alice Oh, Phil, this is Emma Jean? She must weigh over 250 pounds That's baby fat <laughs> Just baby fat, that's all Let me take a look at that monster Good gosh. <laughs> you know, Curly, it's things like this that are ruining our highways. Okay. <laughs> All right, now you both had your little fun. Now, will you kindly give me back my letters? I will on one condition. What's that? Well, I wasn't fooling about that insurance. You've got to get yourself insured right away, and you can't put it off any longer. Okay, okay, it's a deal. If you won't tell anybody about Imogene Tussie... I won't tell anybody you used to sing duets with Burl Ives. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Now, go on. Go on downstairs and take care of that insurance. Honey, oh. it's just as good as done. Hello, Macaulay speaking. Oh, hello, Mac. It's Phil Harris speaking. Oh, hello, Phil. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. Say, Mac... I've been looking over my papers. I got plenty of car insurance, fire insurance, stuff like that, but I don't seem to uh, have any insurance on my life. Well, I realize that, Phil, and you ought to have some. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So uh, why don't you send me a $10,000 policy or two fives, you know, just drop it in the mail. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Phil. We can't give out insurance like that. The company has to take into consideration the risk involved. Look, Mac, I don't drive my car fast. I don't go skiing. I don't fly no airplanes. What risk you talking about? Phil, you're still singing That's What I Like About the South. <laughs> yeah, but 
I do it now on a pogo stick And I'm a tough target <laughs> Well, Phil, if you're serious And you really want a policy I think we can accommodate you But with a policy of that size You'll have to pass an examination And uh, truthfully, it's pretty rigid Look, I'm not worried about that Look, Mac, you're forgetting I got Indian blood in me I come from pioneer stock Why, my great-grandfather Came across the desert on foot in fact, he discovered the first water hole. Maybe you've been through there. It's now called Chaser, Arizona. <laughs> it's just 18 miles north of what'll you have, Nevada. <laughs> Look, Phil, I'll tell you what we'll do, just for you now. It's not usually done, but we'll send a man out to your house. And all you have to do is pass the examination and answer a few questions in our standard insurance form. Gee, that's swell, Mac. That's mighty nice of you. Goodbye. They warned me when you kissed me Your love would ricochet Your lips would find another And your heart would go astray I thought that I could hold you with all my many charms, but then one day you ricochet to someone else's arms. And baby, I don't want a ricochet romance, I don't want a ricochet love. If you're careless with your kisses, find another turtle dove. I can't live on ricochet romance, no, no, not me. If you're gonna ricochet, baby, I'm gonna set you free. I knew the day I met you, you had a roving eye. I thought that I could hold you. What a fool I was to try. You promised you'd be faithful and you would never stray. Then, like a rifle bullet, you began. Ricochet and baby, I don't want a ricochet romance. I don't want a ricochet love. If you're careless with your kisses, find another turtle dove. I can't live on ricochet romance. No, no, not me. If you're gonna ricochet, baby, I'm gonna set you free. When we announced our wedding, you made me mighty proud. I wished. Was company, but you preferred a crowd. You buzzed around the other girl just like a busy bee. And when you finished buzzing, cousin, you buzzed right back to me. And baby, I don't want a ricochet romance, I don't want a ricochet love. If you can't, let's put your kisses, find another turtle dove. I can't live on ricochet romance. Curly, I hate to be a killjoy, but the insurance examiner will be here this afternoon. You've been putting this exercise routine off for the last four days. For a $10,000 policy, you've got to be in the pink. Elliot, this is no major problem. Look at me. I didn't have any trouble getting it to these bathing trunks. I still got a waistline, ain't I? Yeah, but everything above it is a slide area. <laughs> Look, just read the first exercise. Curly, why don't you just ad-lib the exercises? Why do you have to take them out of the Boy Scout manual? Look, them Boy Scout exercises kept me in shape when I was a kid, and they'll do the same thing for me now. Now, go ahead. Read the first exercise. Okay. Take the left leg, wrap it around the right leg, <laughs> then pull them both up in a square knot under the whiskers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> That's how to skin a muskrat. <laughs> Here we are. I got the right page now. How to keep fit physically. Oh, Curly, this is a cinch for you. It says start by bending your right elbow. <laughs> Huh, Curly? 
No, it ain't funny. Well, stop the world and I'll get off. <laughs> Hey, look, Curly. I know a nice exercise. Just get into a nice reclining position. Like how? Well, lie down flat. Yeah. Roll over on your face. Okay. That's it. Now spread your arms straight out. Like this? Yeah. Now relax and get real limp. Yeah, I... Anybody home? I bring it. Hey, Mr. Harris, isn't it a little early for the cocktail hour? <laughs> Judy, just put on a groceries. Well, what None of your business. Now, left leg up, left leg back. Right leg up, right leg back. Left leg up, left leg back. And that's what I call balling a jack zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Julius, get your business over with and beat it, will you? Now, what's the next one, Elliot? Uh, stand up, Curling. Well, that should be easy. Okay, now put the left hand on the left hip. Yeah. Put the right hand on the right hip. Yeah. Now stand way up tall on your tippy toes. Now what'll I do? If you don't fly away, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> Go ahead, little birdie. We all have to leave the nest sometime. <laughs> He's talking, we gotta change grocery store. Hey, what's going on here? What's the pitch, anyway? All right, if you must know, I'm getting myself in shape for an examination. I'm taking out an insurance policy on my life. Yeah, if anything happens to him, it'll be worth $10,000 to somebody. Ain't it kind of risky putting it in the form of an inducement? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. On second thought, I'm in favor of the whole idea. You take this exam, you pass, you get a $10,000 life insurance policy, you cross Sunset Boulevard against the lights, Miss Fay inherits all the money, she waits a few days and marries me. <laughs> Golly, Miss Fay and $10,000. I can see the whole picture now. Paris in the spring, the Riviera in the summer, Monte Carlo in the fall, and back to Knott's Berry Farm for the pottery bacon. <laughs> I suppose he went down in the basement to punch that punching bag some more. I hope he isn't too tired so he can't take the insurance examination. This is probably the man now. Well, Phyllis. The door was locked, Mom, so I had to ring the bell. Well, uh, uh, what are you doing home so early from school? Oh, Mom, the most wonderful thing happened. The teacher is going to let me skip a grade. Really? Yes, I'm going to get a school board test this afternoon, and if I pass it, I'm going to be in the eighth grade. Oh, how wonderful. Aren't you proud? Oh, I sure am, Mom. <laughs> and the teacher said there's no telling how far I can go in school if I just get Daddy to stop helping me with my lessons. <laughs> well, Daddy does get a little mixed up on some things. He... Yes, I made a bad mistake in history class. Daddy told me that Columbus landed in New Orleans. <laughs> well, that's all wrong, honey. Columbus sailed for America, but his first stop was the Canary Islands. That's what I told Daddy. But he said that in New Orleans on Saturday night, everybody is a canary. <laughs> now, if you're going to take that test, you'd better go up to your room and brush up on your lessons a bit, huh? Yeah, I'd better. Mr. Baxter gives some pretty tough questions. Mr. Baxter? Yes, he's the man who's coming from the school board to see if I'm smart enough. Well, all right. I I'll let you know when he gets here. Okay, Mom. Well, I'd better get busy and tidy this living room up a bit if I... Hey, honey, I want to ask you something. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. What what's that you're carrying? That's a rope, Alice. Curly skipping rope like fighters do to get in condition. It's great for improving your wind. Yeah, but I can't seem to get that rhythm. What is it that kids say when they're skipping rope? Oh, you mean one potato, two potato, three potato, four? Yeah, but what comes after that? Well, Phyllis is upstairs. Why don't you ask her? Yeah, I'll go up and ask her. See, one potato, two potato, three potato. You know, Elliot, the way Phil throws himself into these things, 
I sometimes wonder if he's got all his marbles. <laughs> Oh, he's got them. They just all rolled over to one side. <laughs> well, I guess it'll all be worthwhile if he ends up with some insurance. I'll be in the kitchen, Elliot. I've got a couple of pies in the oven. Yeah, okay, Alice. <laughs> First the tide rushes in. Till it's up to your chin. <laughs> I don't know who'd answer the doorbell around here if it wasn't for me. Then the tide rushes out. Till it's up to your... How do you do? My name is Baxter. Horace R. Baxter. I'm here to give an examination. Oh, yeah. Curly's been expecting you. Come right in. Thank you. Won't you step into the living room, Mr. Baxter? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, this is a cozy room. Ooh, quite a lot of books on the shelves. That's always very encouraging. May I look at some of them? Oh, sure. Hmm. What an enchanting book collection. Freddy the Frog. <laughs> Tom Swift fights the space monster. <laughs> and Gingerbread Land with Bobo, Baba, and Boo Boo. <laughs> but who reads these books? Curly. He likes Bobo and Baba, but Boo Boo is his favorite. Because Boo Boo can touch people with his magic wand and change them into brownies. Does, uh, does this Curly believe in the little people? Believe in them? He sees them. <laughs> well, I guess you're anxious to get started with the test. I'll call him. Hey, Curly! Yeah! Hey, Curly, come on in here. Okay. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven potato more. My mother told me to take the... Oh, oh. I, I didn't know anybody was here. I was, uh, uh, skipping my rope. <laughs> so I see. And very well, too. <laughs> Oh, you think that was good? You just look at this. Ibbity bibbity sibbity sap. Ibbity bibbity cannabo. <laughs> Ibbity bibbity cannabo. Yeah. You see, I knew you were coming, so I was getting ready. You're ready. <laughs> you know, I really thought when I was sent here that I was to examine someone else. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Curly, here's the guy. He needs it. He certainly does. <laughs> well, they've given me some strange assignments, but... Well, I have the initial right here on the questionnaire. You, you are P. Harris, aren't you? Yep. Ain't another one. <laughs> well, I guess we'd better start the examination. I, I had instructions to start with a more advanced test, but... Well, I see I'll have to revert to one more elementary... Fortunately, I have the elementary test with me. I don't want you to hold nothing back. No, don't worry, I won't. Are you ready for the first question? <clears throat> yep. Very well. What does the moo cow say? <laughs> huh? Am, am I going too fast for you? I don't get well, the... Of course you don't. With some, it does come more slowly. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll try the second question. I'll say a word, and then you say the first word that pops into your mind. Wait a minute. What's this now, got to do... We've got to cooperate. <coughs> now, here comes the first word. Cup. Saucer. Oh, that's good. That's quite good. <laughs> Foot. Shoe. Money. Dollar. Nickel. Girl. <laughs> uh, just one moment. How could a nickel remind you of a girl? He used to go with a girl who was built like a Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
Look, mister, I don't understand this. I didn't expect this kind of an examination. Aren't you going to listen to my heart or look at my chest or hit me on my knee with a rubber hammer? No, but later we may tap your head for echoes. <laughs> I've come up against some problem cases in my time, but this tops them all. Well, let's try one more question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm hi, sorry. Alice. Uh, uh, mister, this is my wife. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Harris? I'm Mr. Baxter from the Los Angeles School Board. I'm afraid I have the unpleasant task of giving your husband the 10-year-old intelligence test, and he hasn't... Oh, dear. Mr. Baxter. Oh, Mr. Baxter. It was my daughter, Phyllis, who was supposed to get it. Oh, Mr. Baxter, that's very funny. Hey, yeah, that's very funny, Mr. Baxter. <laughs> Imagine giving me a 10-year-old intelligence test. <laughs> what does the cow say? <laughs> Now, children, quiet. Uh, children, this morning we have someone new in our class, and I think this is the proper time to give them a hearty welcome to the eighth grade. First, we have the little Harris girl. Are you glad to be with us, dear? Oh, yes, Mr. Stevens. I'm so thrilled that I was promoted to this class. <laughs> and now for our other new student. <laughs> well, aren't you glad to be here? Well, I, I may get used to it, but so far it's been uphill all the way. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. The music you hear on some radios may sound like this. But over an RCA Victor, that same music sounds like this. The reason? RCA Victor's famous Golden Throat. The Golden Throat is an exclusive tone system that enables an RCA Victor radio to produce the finest quality sound. And basically, sound is what you're really buying when you buy a radio. That's why it's important to get an RCA Victor. Only RCA Victor has the famous golden throat, your assurance of studio clear tone year after year. The proof is in the listening. Drop into your dealers tomorrow and hear his wide selections of fine radios with the golden throat by RCA Victor. This is Phil again. Folks, I'd like to add my bit to the many things that have been said about traffic accidents. Close to 9,000 lives were lost during 1953 in motor tragedies. Who knows how many lives could have been saved if traffic rules and speed limits had been observed. Remember this. If you gamble behind that wheel, you're betting your life. Thanks, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed were Fletch Clark and Peter Lee. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network presentation. That's the quartet from Rigoletto, one of the selections in a new album, Opera Without Singing recorded by Arthur Fiedler and the Boston Pops Orchestra. As its name implies, this unusual album offers you a rare opportunity to hear the music of great operas without the words. Ask for this unusual RCA Victor album, Opera Without Singing, at your record dealers now. Now, hear John Cameron Swayze and the news on the NBC Radio Network.